Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the new tracker in Nuke 7. If you have seen Dan's tutorials on the tracker then you will have a good idea of the new interface but I'm just going to start off and introduce you to it. I bring up the tracker in the same way as we have done before and as you can see already there's a number of differences. The first thing you'll notice is that we've got a panel here that allows us to store as many tracks as we want. We are no longer limited to the initial four. And also down here we have an export panel that allows us to create corner pins or transforms easily from the tracker. We also have a lot of the parameters and controls moved into the toolbar here and the tracking controls themselves moved away from the panel and also into the toolbar which means we can now work full screen for all our tracking. So I'll go full screen and we'll just work in this mode. If I go to the first frame and we'll pick some tracking points. Now to create a tracking point I can click this icon here and I can just click and while it's active wherever I click I get a new tracker or I can just hold the shift key down and click anywhere at any time to add a new tracker and in our panel we've now got four trackers if I select one it selects it in the viewer and if I select it in the viewer it selects it in the track panel and any of the tracks that are selected are the ones that will be tracked when I click on track forward or backward. You'll also notice that we now have hotkeys for the main tracking parameters C and V for going forwards, X and Z for going backwards. And we now have a new stop tracking button in the middle. We also now have a hide progress button that stops the progress window from popping up when we're tracking. So I go back to tracking, if I just select one of those for the moment, you'll see here we've got a zoom window that shows us in detail the size of the track, and if I press shift I can then zoom in and out to get even greater detail. So I select one and three, and we just track forward. I'll stop the track at that point, and this time I'm just going to use the V key and carry on tracking. The escape key stops the tracking, C will track forward a frame at a time, and back to the V. So working this way makes it very, very fast to set up tracks and just get on and do your tracking. I'll just go back to full screen mode, and I'm going to create a new track. And the one I've created is the one that I can instantly track, so I just press Z to track backwards. So a very, very nice and fast workflow. Now let's have a look at another tracking issue. So I'm back in Nuke 6.3 for the moment. And I've got a very, very old piece of footage that I'd like to stabilise. Lots of luminance changes, lots of noise, all sorts of problems. Now if I try and track this with this tracker, we'll see how it fares. And it's an instant failure. So let's see how Nuke 7 gets on. Back in Nuke 7, and I'll bring up the new tracker. I'm just going to hide the progress bar a moment. And I'll create a track in the same position as we did in Nuke 6.3. And we'll see how it gets on. Well, it's closer, but still no cigar. So if I go into the settings, there's a nice new little feature here called Adjust for Luminance Changes. So if I turn that on, it'll start working through the luminance changes of the shot. Let's see how it does now. And as we can see, instantly a much better track. So if you're having problems tracking a shot with lots of luminance variations, turn this on and you should be able to get a much better track. I've also found it works in other shots that don't necessarily have luminance changes, so if you are having trouble with the shot, it's worth trying it and seeing if it works. I'll just delete that track, and I'll expand up the interface a little bit, because we've got some other parameters that have been hidden because of the size of the interface. Now one of the advantages of this new track is it allows us to create as many tracks as we like, and a very good technique when you've got noisy footage is to put lots of tracks into the same area and average them all together. Now this can be quite difficult at times because there's a lot of maths involved and expressions involved. 
and you may need more than the four tracks that you were offered in Nuke 63. But here I've now got six tracks. I can select them all. I just check luminance is still on. Yes. And track forward. Now we have this new traffic light system which would normally let us see whether tracks have any problems or not. But when they overlap like this, they're not much use. So instead, I'll use the viewer to see if they're any good or not. And when I'm happy, I can select all the tracks. I can select the new Avid Tracks button. And it's going to combine all those tracks into one keyframed track. And I now have one super track based on, in this case, six other tracks, but I have in the past used 16 or more to get a good track. And this is also a very good technique, not only when you've got very grainy shots or noisy shots like this, but also when there's heat haze or any other kind of disturbance that would be getting in the way of the pattern that you're trying to track. So back to our dancers, and I'd like to show you a couple of other new features that are in the new tracker. Under the settings, we have a new thing called Snap to Markers. Now what Snap to Markers will do is show you what Nuke considers to be a good tracking point. Now you can choose from blobs or corners, and then with a green circle, Nuke will show you a good candidate for tracking. It then snaps the tracker to that point. So now I'd like to show you a new feature, which allows us to combine tracking and roto together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tracker to allow me to roto around this green screen. So I'll create a roto node and a tracking node. And these both have to be present for this new feature to work. I can now start creating my shape. And then if I select those points, right click, I can link to tracker one, but here's the new thing is I can create new links. And what that has done is in the tracker itself is created four track points, one for each of the points on the rotor shape that I created and selected. Now in this shot, the bottom of the green screen goes out of frame. I'm going to deal with this with a neat little feature in the tracker. So what I need to do is to be able to turn off tracks 1 and 2 as the green screen leaves the bottom of the frame. So now, using the new enabled button, I can keyframe when the trackers are on or off. And now they won't bother to track at that point. I'll select all four of them and hit Z to track backwards. You'll see that when track 1 and 2 hit the bottom of the screen, they will no longer carry on tracking. But tracks 3 and 4 will. So I'll just close this tracker for the moment, and we just look at the roto. And we can see now that those points of the roto have been linked. Now where the two trackers stopped, you can see at the bottom of the screen here, these two parts of the roto have stopped also. So if I go back into the tracker, I'll select those two, so then I right click, and I'll just say interpolation before linear, and now those points carry on based on the extrapolation of the curve, and we'll see my roto has continued onwards. Now this is a stereo image, but the tracker has only tracked one eye. Now when you work in stereo now in Nuke 7, you have this new stereo offset parameter, and I can split that open. Now I'm going to offset the roto to where it should be in the left view.
Now we have both eyes rotoed through using the tracker. This is Howard Jones for the Foundry. Goodbye.